This uh, project is a study of the soccer ball production industry in Sialkot, Pakistan. The soccer ball industry is one of the major industries of Pakistan. It's one, one, of, one of a handful of industries where they've been very successful at, at a global level. The sector has been facing a lot of intense competition from China, from other, from other countries as well. And so they're very concerned. This is something they're thinking about a lot, about how do you, how do I, you know, how do I help this sector, how do I help this sector to grow? Uh, a crucial element to growth is innovation. That, that's got to be the case. And so then the question is, you know, how do you promote innovation? So essentially the main part of the cutting process for them, they have these big sheets of, of, of Rexon, the artificial leather. You can imagine that this, this whiteboard is the sheet of, of artificial leather and they have dyes of, of hexagons and pentagons. Okay, the basic design requires both hexagons and pentagons. They have two hexagon and two pentagon dyes. Now the, the thing about hexagons, and they move these by hand and they cut them by hand, and the thing about hexagons is that they, you can completely fill a plane uh, with, with hexagons without any space, without any additional space. So for instance, you can have hexagon tiles on your floor. With pentagons, that doesn't work. Okay? You can't tile a floor with pentagons. They don't completely fill a plane. Okay? There's necessarily going to be waste. Now what they were doing, these cutters who were moving these dies by hand, they were imitating the pattern that they used for the, he for the hexagons with the pentagons. Okay? But what that meant was necessarily because the shape of the pentagon, because it doesn't fill a plane, you can't tile the floor, they end up with more waste. Okay? And so what our technology is, is a different way of laying out pentagons to minimize the waste. Okay, one group we're calling the tech drop group, one group we're calling the cash drop group, one group we're calling the control group. Okay? So the control group, we did nothing. We just did a survey, we didn't give them anything. Okay. To the tech drop group, we gave them the die okay, that, that, uh, that they can use to cut, cut the pentagons, and we also gave them the blueprint in case they wanted to modify that die, use slightly different sizes, and it also illustrates the layout for how to use that die to maximize the number of pentagons they get out of a Rexon sheet. In the cash drop group, we did nothing. We didn't explain about the die, we didn't give a blueprint. All we gave was cash that, that has the monetary value of the die, which is about uh, $330, so something like I don't know, 180 pounds, however much that is. Um, so that, and that we're answering because we, we wanted to make sure we could distinguish the effect of having the idea from having the extra capital that we're giving them when we give them the die. Here we can measure for a control firm, how many network links do they have to firms that, that were in the tech drop group? that we're exposed to technology, okay? And the hypothesis there is having more connections, okay, to tech drop firms is gonna increase the likelihood that they adopt. So let's say an individual firm came up with this idea, okay, what would be the additional profitability for that given firm as compared to the total profits in the entire sector, okay? And those two things may be very different. Because in fact, what happens is the profit for an individual firm may be quite small. Because what happens is they come up with the idea, it immediately spreads, everybody's costs go down, right? So, the, so prices might, may go down, okay? And so the, the profit for the individual investor is actually quite small, even though it's clearly a good thing for the sector as a whole, okay? So if that's the case, individual firms are not gonna invest very much in coming up with this idea. Because the profit to them personally is not very high. And that may be a reason why, we, why the market undersupplies innovation, why we might not see as much innovation um, as, as would be socially optimal, as economists would say. And our explanation implies that the, the government, basically, might, there's a role for government in uh, subsidizing innovation. And sort of having some, some, some sense and some rigorous sense of how that process is happening is clearly going to inform the policy for how do you promote innovation, how do you promote growth in the, in the long run. In a place like Pakistan, I would think it applies in many other developing countries and, and developed countries as well.